Hello and welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you how I painted these Plastic Soldier Company 15mm German half tracks in a late war three tone camouflage pattern. I used my airbrush on this and it's a brand new airbrush. I only bought it in January a couple of months ago and I've been slowly learning how to use this. There's a lot of videos out there showing you how to use airbrushes uh, at professional levels but not so many that show actual absolute starter level of airbrushing. So. I'm going to basically show you what's and all me learning how to use my airbrush, uh, even the mistakes, and hopefully it'll give somebody a little bit of a boost to buy one themselves and also just take the plunge into this other part of the hobby. First things first was to actually build and undercoat the models themselves. I did this with a red grey rattle can primer, and then I started working up with the base colours of the three-tone camo and this is Vallejo's middle stone uh, their airbrush version of it so it's a lot thinner than your usual paints your usual acrylic paints you could be using gloves here but I'm not bothered because it's only acrylic paint and it'll wash off with water anyway soap and water so I wouldn't worry too much about it but I just ensure here that your model is completely covered with the paint even in the inside with these obviously they're open top so I had to get right inside with the airbrush to get all the interior covered as well and just work my way around slowly just keeping it about an inch or two away from the model the airbrush itself so that I wasn't putting too much paint onto the surface. As I'm new to airbrushing I'm not entirely sure how much quicker this is than doing it by brush because I'm probably quite slow with the airbrush anyway at this point. But the next stage after this is I just cleaned the airbrush itself out because I wanted to put in the next paint, obviously. Uh, cleaning out the bowl with some clean water there. I just had a, a bottle of water on the side ready for it. This is an airbrush cleaning pot that I picked up and it's got water in the bottom of it. So I was just literally emptying out as much of the thick paint as I could out of the pot. Again, I've really not got to a point where I'm, I know how much paint to use. Uh, with the airbrush itself for the task at hand so I'm probably wasting quite a lot of paint at this point. Uh, you could always put in a small amount of paint rather than a large amount and then just keep topping it up as you need it. You can also put in your thinners as well just to, to make it go that little further. And then using this cleaning pot I basically blew clean air through the actual airbrush itself into the pot and it collects it all in the bottom it's got a filter as well built in and then you can just empty this out when you've finished and clean it to give that a clean on its own uh, this took a little while because i had to do it quite a few times i'm not sure if i had the right pressure on for the airbrush itself or not but it seemed to work i also stripped down the uh, actual nozzle of the airbrush as well and just cleaned off some of the gunk of the paint that had just built up just so it doesn't discolor any later paint that I'm going to use. And then once that was clean I wanted to start to think about the next layer of colour for the camouflage. Now I'm using this putty that I got from AK Interactive and this is a specially formulated putty for using on model kits. It doesn't leave a residue, it doesn't actually stick to the vehicles as well. So it's good for creating shapes for camouflage. I broke off small bits and rolled them into little worms as you can see and then lay them over the top of the vehicle by pressing them down slightly. The putty is laid wherever you want the yellow to show through once you've finished so you're masking off the middle stone at this point. So I covered a couple of the tyres in this, a couple of the wheels as well and also just you can see how it's there is going to be now stripes when I come to the next stage of painting. Uh, and I've also left these quite wide as well so that I can put more stripes on later. So when I do the third stage of the actual camo painting itself. Uh, it took a little while this. Again, this is something that I'll probably need to get used to. I filled up the interior of both of these half tracks with a larger blob of the putty itself. And it filled up quite nicely. Again, I'd never done this before, so I was interested to see what the outcome was going to be. And then I moved on to spraying the brown paint over the vehicle because the three-tone camo is basically the middle stone, a brown, a reddish brown, and then a green as well. I used whichever paint I had at hand, and this I think is mahogany by Vallejo, 
I thinned this down and I probably really shouldn't have done at this point. So I was trying to emulate something that had been sprayed in the field and I shouldn't have really gone that far for this because the paint itself was a little bit too wet to go on. Uh, but this is a lesson learned and as I say, I'm just showing you all the mistakes that I made uh, as I was learning how to do this anyway. My next step then was to add even more putty and this was just going to go over some of the areas of the brown just to cover the brown paint up just so that I could then paint green into the areas that weren't, weren't covered by putty. What I should have done really is taken a bit more time over this, made some of these stripes a little bit smaller because as you'll see later on some of this turned out a bit messy, it didn't turn out perfectly well but this was my first time trying it so this was a complete experiment on my part and I was just working up to to work out how to use the putty also just how to use the the spray paint itself as well all of this was new to me and I'm sure it's new to you as well if you've not done this stuff before then we began spraying green over the top this time I didn't dilute the green I think I got better coverage for it than the brown so again that's something that I've learned straight away just uh, about thinning paints down I probably didn't need to because they were already thin because they're airbrush paints just ensure that everything is covered once again going over everything these things end up looking a little bit like uh, some Shoggoths from uh, Call of Cthulhu or some other HP Lovecraft horror story but I left them to dry and then it was time to start to take the putty off because the putty is specially formulated for modelers and modeling it came off really easy I just had to scratch away at some of it it's also reusable so you get tons of this stuff uh, for 15 millimeter in, in particular you can do a lot of vehicles at once uh, even if it's been sprayed you can reuse it just go straight back in the tin and it works perfectly well the next time you use it and you can see there as I'm unveiling the vehicle itself you can see that there's a little bit a few patches here and there especially of the brown the brown should have been a bit thicker when I painted it uh, this is something I'm going to take into account next time the hardest part to get out was the interior putty uh, and I just used a flat headed screwdriver just to lever some of it out but as soon as it was out that was it it was finished and it was off as you can see some of the putty there the work that I did with the putty I, I could have been a bit more accurate uh, I probably sped up a little bit too much with that and I made a few mistakes here and there completely covering over the brown or, or missing bits of it so in future I'm going to have to be a lot carefuler with this and it's this is just lessons learned really and also just some of the areas just didn't get hit at all by the, the paint as well and that was my first attempt they look a little bit stark uh, but then I weathered them down and it actually blended in those three tone camo colours a lot better uh, they bedded in I haven't done a video on how I weathered them but I probably will do at some point in the future this was really just to show you how I'm getting on with the airbrush as much as anything else and hopefully to inspire somebody else to pick one up and just start using it all you can do is experiment with these things and you will get better as I'm sure I will well thanks for watching and please subscribe if you haven't